Welcome to the village of Chatsworth. East of Greater Manchester, nestled into the hills of the Peak District, this small village was famous for one thing and one thing only, being the home of the 69th Mechanised Brigade, one of the most highly decorated units in the entire British Army. It has served in every major conflict since its inception during World War II, and it was also the home to many families who lived on the base. And it's a story of four of these families and their boys that we will be following today. As the brave soldiers of the 69th spent large amounts of time away serving their country, it was left to their wives to stay back on the base and raise their children. Four boys in particular had grown up together in Chatsworth. Four friends who over time had spent that much time together, they saw themselves more as brothers than friends. And as always on top of the group was Graham Statham, a natural leader. Graham's father was from Leeds and had brought his son up to be a loyal Leeds United fan. From an early age, Graham had shown great strength and mental abilities, both at school and in sports. All the other boys looked up to him for guidance and encouragement whenever it was needed, and he loved it. He thrived under pressure, and when he wasn't playing sports, you could always find him battling his friend Brian at FIFA. Now on to Brian. He was more of the quiet one in the group. Brian and his family had moved from Glasgow to the Chatsworth base when he was just eight years old. The last boy to join the gang Brian still had flickers of his old Scottish accent. The Rangers fan wouldn't speak much, but when he did rarely talk, the boys always listened because Brian always talked sense. Next up, it was Jeff Wick. His family were originally from Dorset, and like his father and grandfather before him, he was an avid supporter of Arsenal Football Club. Jeff was a tough kid of the group. Some said he was born with muscles built on muscles. He was a junior MMA champion, and Jeff would always protect his friends. And whenever Jeff was around, nobody messed with the other three lads. Last but not least, it was Joe McLean. Now every group of friends has a joker, and that title definitely suited Joe. The only lad to hail from anywhere local to the base, Joe and his family were originally from Stockport, and were all super loyal to the non-league team, Stockport County. Joe was the free-living, daydreaming, fun one. Always up for a laugh. Nobody ever took his kids seriously. Not even his family, and definitely not his best friends. With their fathers away on duty and their mothers busy doing various other things together, the boys were free to do pretty much whatever they wanted. But the only thing they really loved doing was playing football. All four boys had showed good levels of talent and from an early age, the coaches had said all four boys could make it as footballers one day, albeit at different levels. Brian, you could say, was the least talented and was always stuck in goal. But after years and years of playing as a keeper, he'd become rather good. Next, it was Jeff. He was a decent centre-back but the young lad had some aggression issues, so he could let himself down on the pitch sometimes. Graham was a very good midfielder and captain of their youth team, but it was Joe, the one person who never took football or life seriously, who was blessed with the most talent. He'd been touted by many coaches as being the next George Best from the age of six. Now, apart from playing football, the boys were also members of the local scout group, and every summer, they would attend the Chatsworth Scout Camp where they would spend two weeks doing all kinds of activities. Now one evening, as the lads were making a fire to cook their evening meal on, Joe had something to say. Lads, said Joe with his usual cheeky grin. All the talk is that when we leave school, we could all actually have a chance of playing football professionally. Well, you will for sure, said Graham. My mum said that United and City sent scouts to our last game just to watch you. Yeah, I know, he replied. But I don't care too much for playing for a big team. I'd rather play for Peanuts and step out on that hollow turf of Edgeley Park. I'm going to play for County. You what? said Jeff. So you're saying you turn down United or City and play for bloody Stockport County? You're damn right, said Joe. And with that, all the other boys <laughs> rolled around the floor laughing. You could just never take this lad serious. But then out of nowhere, Joe's face went cold. Listen, boys, if we all sign for different teams, we will never see each other again. I reckon we all sign for Stockport and we take my club back to the Football League. It would be awesome. We could all live together and party and... And before he could finish, all three boys just looked at him blank and after a few seconds, just burst into hysterics. This was just Joe being Joe, talking random nonsense as always. Not one of them thought he meant it. And if he did, they were just going to ignore it. When the summer ended, it would be the last year they would spend together. The footballing talent of all the lads had caught the attention of many clubs and scouts throughout the leagues. It was time for them all to part ways. Graham was signed by Premier League club Burnley. Jeff joined Championship side Blackburn. 
Brian had a few offers from League Two clubs, but he decided to sign for Oldham Athletic so he could be close to his mum. And then, well, then there was Joe. Joe was a striker with the talent to attract the attention of all the big clubs. Representatives of Manchester United and City, as well as Liverpool, have put lucrative offers on the table for young Joe to sign and join their youth team. But Joe was cut from a different cloth. Joe lived life differently and thought differently. This skateboarding, loving life surfer dude didn't care about anything else apart from playing for Stockport County. He signed a youth contract with the Atters, shocking the footballing world. Why would anyone turn down the big teams of the Premier League? Well, Joe wasn't just anyone. Joe was Joe, and even though his friends thought he was crazy, they all had his back. Over the next three seasons, all four lads excelled in the youth teams of their respective clubs. Graham was on the brink of becoming a first-team player at Burnley. Jeff and Brian were about a year away from doing the same at their clubs, and Joe, well, he was tearing it up in the non-league and in the first team from day one scoring over 45 goals in every season he played in. Now, after spending most of the last three years away from each other, apart from the occasional meet-up for a birthday party or two, the boys decided to meet up for a weekend drinking session in Manchester, as all the lads had finally become men and turned 18. After they sank a few pints, the lads started talking about the old days when they were boys. Joe brought up that chat they had around the campfire and reminded the others that he and Stockport were still welcome all three with open arms. Now, as the lads had a little giggle, Graham sat back in his chair. He had a serious look on his face. Something was weighing on his mind. Okay, lads, uh, I really need to talk to you all. The rest of the boys could tell he was serious. You're leaving for Burnley and signing for County, joked Joe. Nah, mate. Do you remember what else we talked about around the campfire that day? I remember, said Jeff. You talked about us all following our father's footsteps one day and becoming soldiers. Yep, that's right. I did, said Graham. Growing up, listening to our father's stories and watching the day-to-day -day training on the base, it always gave me a feeling that I should do this one day. But football took over, you know, well, like it did for us all. Now I know I'm privileged to be in my position. I have a chance of playing Premier League football next year. But I've decided I'm not going to re-sign when I return to Burnley. In fact, I'm going to join the army and do my bit for my country. If I can get back into football one day in the future, then that's great. But I have to do this. Brian, Jeff and Joe all looked at each other and then looked at Graham with smiles on their faces. Brian, who rarely talked, was the first to speak. Graham, my old friend, I feel exactly the same. Being a footballer is something I've dreamed about, but not as much as i dreamed about being a soldier. I don't think I could ever take myself seriously if I don't do my duty and serve in the armed forces. Mate, I'm signing up with you. Guys, said Jeff in a very happy tone, this is freaking awesome. I'm in too. Joe just got out of his seat, walked over to the bar without saying a single word. Moments later, he returned with four glasses of whiskey, neat with no ice. He passed them around to his friends and said, lads, you are and will always be my brothers. We are in this till the end. F football, we can do that later. I love every single one of you and I would die for every single one of you. Where do I sign up? And with that, the boys spent that night getting blind drunk, dancing in the streets and chatting up as much local talent as possible. The next morning with heavy heads, they all called their agents and informed them to inform their clubs that they would not be re-signing new deals. The next week, they had all enrolled into the army with the hope of joining the 69th like their fathers before them. The story made national news. Many people praised the boys' bravery, including their families. Now, almost two years had passed and our four friends found themselves on their first long tour of duty. After six months, that tour was almost over. They had spent the previous few months in the Middle Eastern country of Ajal. Ajal had been the scene of a civil war now for the past two years. Rebel fighters were trying to overthrow the king and his allies, but due to the king's close relationship with the British government, the British army and our four heroes had been sent to the kingdom of Ajal to help squash the rebel army. Now, on a routine patrol of a local village, orders came through for Graham, Brian, Jeff and Joe and their unit to head to a nearby compound. Intel had said that a rebel leader was hiding inside the building. Their unit was tasked with clearing out this building and bringing him in dead or alive. They were split up into groups of four, with our four boys being given the job of going around the back and getting in through the door. Graham, as always, was the one in front. They may all be the same rank, but he had been the leader of this group of friends since they were boys, and he was always first into any situation. He opened the door, and the rest charged in behind him. Straight away, the door was slammed and locked behind them, making the room instantly dark. Before any of the lads could react, they heard something rolling along the floor. (laughs) 
Moments had passed. Graham woke up. He knew he'd been out cold for a few seconds. Blasts of some kind had sent him into the wall. His ears were ringing and bleeding. And he still couldn't see anything. He checked his arms. He checked his legs. He was okay. Shell shocked, but okay. Then he panicked. The boys, he thought. Lads, lads, Graham shouted. It was a trap. Are we all okay? I can't see anything. I'm okay, G, said Jeff. Bruised and my ears are ringing, but I'm in one piece. Brian, what about you? Not too bad, pal. Someone's cut through my leg, but I'll live, mate. Joe, mate, what about you? Shouted Graham. He heard nothing back. Now all the lads were panicked, and together they shouted, Joe! Just then, the door crashed open and the light flooded in as the rest of their unit entered. What they saw next on the floor would haunt these three friends forever. Joe had been the last to enter the room, and as that door slammed behind him and that last flicker of light left, he looked down and saw the reflection of a grenade that had just rolled between his legs. Without a second thought, he fell onto it, covering it with his whole body, taking the full force of the blast and saving his friends' lives, but killing himself instantly. Graham, Brian and Jeff were all discharged from the army as they were deemed psychologically unfit to carry out any further duties. They packed up their equipment and were sent home straight away. The next couple of months were tough for the boys. They hadn't lost a friend, they'd lost a brother. Graham was blaming himself and drinking too much. It was his idea to join up. If he had never mentioned joining the army, maybe Joe would still be alive. Now the last thing on any of the lads' minds was football, but the footballing world hadn't forgotten about them. In fact, the entire country's press were hounding them all for an interview. Everyone had been following the story back home and everyone wanted to talk to them. So they decided to hold a press conference to clear the air, talk to the press and discuss their future plans in football. Three lads sat down in front of a packed press room with cameras flashing in their faces. Graham sat in the middle of his two friends, looked up and began to speak. Hello, um, thank you all for coming today. We know there's been a lot of interest in our story ever since we all decided to leave football and, and join the armed forces and, and now, more than ever, with the loss of our dear brother, you all want to know our next step. Well, I can tell you that we all hopefully will be returning to football, but it's not with the clubs that everyone is speculating. Brian, Jeff and myself, in honour of our fallen brother Joe, would like to offer our services for whatever price for a minimum of two years to Stockport County. We'll play for free if necessary. We just feel that we owe it to Joe. So, Mr Gannon, if you're listening, mate, please give us all a call. We're ready to play for you. And wherever Joe was, he would be looking down with a big smile on his face, proud that the boys were sticking together and playing for the club he loved. In fact, knowing Joe, he'd be joking that it's the least they could do. He did save their lives. So what will happen to our three friends? After missing two years of football and after losing a brother, will they ever achieve greatness in football? Most of all, can they do their old friend proud while they're at Stockport County? Well, we're going to find out in the story of a band of brothers. Hello, I'm Bood and welcome to the channel and welcome to a band of brothers. As always, thanks for joining me. I really do appreciate it. This is just another story video. We're going to tie into Football Manager and go on a bit of a Football Manager adventure. If you enjoy it, make sure you smash the like button. If you're brand new, feel free to subscribe. Uh, go and check out my old videos and hopefully you'll stick around for my new videos. And if you all want to help me out a little bit more, keep the channel running properly, you can pledge to my Patreon. you find a link to that and everything else down below in the description. Now you've seen the story, it's been the longest one. I, I caught about 10 minutes out as well. I just couldn't help it. I think I, I really enjoyed making it. I know it's not the happiest story, um, but I did have a lot of fun actually putting it together. I'd like to thank all the four guys who've lent the faces. We'll talk about all that later. And we've got three guys now uh, whose story we're going to be following. Three different kinds of players with three different potential abilities. So let's get into the story. We're going to start the story here with Stockport County. Obviously, Jim Gannon. You saw him in the story. He's the manager. Now, the captain at the moment is Sam Walker. Now, I've made Sam the captain because one of my best friends, Sean Walker, is his big brother. So, yeah, my mate's little brother. I've talked about this before. Is Sam Walker. Bit of a legend. Bit of a footballing legend. He won the FA Trophy with Halifax. There you go. Um, so, yeah, Graham at the minute, you know he's a leader. He's the leader of the boys. Uh, he was the leader when they were in the army. He's the vice captain, Graham Statham. Um, but they're starting here. Now, they've got two-year deals. Don't necessarily mean they're going to stay here for two years. But I think they're all kind of hoping when they do leave, they'll go for a good amount of money and they will help Stockport. But can they stay long enough to get Stockport into the Football League? That's the first bit I want to know. Um, Stockport have only recently gone up to the National and definitely should be a Football League team. Massive club. I love the club. Um, so hopefully the boys 
can help them out. But what are the boys like? Let's have a look. We're going to start with Brian Norris. He's the goalkeeper. He's the Scottish national who spent most of his life in England on the base uh, with his mum and dad. Um, but he is Scottish and he wants to play for Scotland. So, you know, if hopefully one day he will do. We'll have to wait and see. Now, obviously, they're all three different positions. They're all three different potential abilities. Most of these videos, videos I do, it's about a wonder kid. Well, unfortunately, the wonder kid was Joe McLean. He was the minus 10 player, the next Ronaldo, the next Messi, the next George Best. He's obviously not with us anymore. Um, so we've got three different levels now. I'm going to start here at the bottom with Brian, who is a minus seven potential. Now, minus seven, I've written this down because I don't know what, I don't know it on top of my head, is can go anywhere, reach anything from 110 to 140. And when you think the maximum is 200, I won't say Brian's ever going to be an elite goalkeeper, but it'd be interesting to see what kind of career he has. I mean, he's got experience at Oldham, um, so, you know, anything can happen. I mean, he is a brave lad, obviously, joining the army. He's got decent physicals. He punches too much, but again, he was hanging around with Jeff too much, and he always liked a little bit of a fight. Uh, handling's 12, though. Uh, it reflexes 11. He's 20 years old. He's got a few good years left in him. It'll be good if he can progress. Onto his information page, and as you can see, he is... A Rangers fan and they've all got the same agent everyone now in the Bootyverse is gonna have Terry Tibbs as their agent he's a good agent he don't take any shit and he'll hopefully always get the lads um, that create or created like my patrons good deals uh, but yeah favorite personnel you'll see Joe McLean will always be his friend even though he's not with us anymore he will always be in everyone's hearts poor Joe eh? what a freaking hero Joe jumping on a grenade eh? no one thought he'd do it just because he always used to take the mickey out of everyone. Bit of a joker, but when, when shit got real, Joe got real. Saved his buddies, didn't he? Uh, obviously, Jeff Wick and Graham Statham, who we will look at pretty soon. Um, he hopes, he likes to play for Stockport. He's doing that for his friend. But he hopes to play for Rangers one day. Quick look at his history, because he did play for Oldham's youth team for three years, and they're all youth team appearances. And then you can tell by the dates, there's a couple of seasons missing, and now he's back with County on a mission. Next, we're on to Jeff Wick, the centre half, the tough guy, the MMA youth fighter. Um, no one messes with him. No one messes with him in the army. No one's ever messed with him. Hard as freaking nails, but a lovely fella and a lovely fella to his friends. Um, so he's a centre half and he is a minus eight potential. So he can go from anywhere from being a 130 player to a 160 player. Um, so again, will he ever become super elite? Maybe not. But he's still good enough to hopefully get to the Premier League. I'm sure Chris Smalling used to be like 145. I know he's crap, but he was in the Premier League. So I'm hoping uh, Jeff can get to the Premier League and hopefully play for England as well. I think that would be pretty cool. Information-wise, it's all the same. Obviously, though, he's English. Same agent. Arsenal fan. You saw that in the story. He's from down south. Um, Arsenal fan like his dad and his granddad. Obviously, friends with Joe, Graham and Brian. Uh, and hopefully, wants to play for Arsenal one day. And again, just to quickly show you his history, just so you can see, he had three years, didn't he? With Blackburn, in their youth team, got better and better and better, and then left for two years, um, and now he's back. Last but not least, is the leader of the group, and it's Graham Statham. He's going to be a minus nine player, so he can go anywhere from 150 to 180, so he could become an elite uh, midfielder. Um, should definitely play for England, I reckon. Should have a good career in the Premier League eventually, but like with all the lads, they've missed some time. And then they're coming back at 20. Um, the goalkeeper will have more time to develop. But the, the other two, they've got less time. They've got three years, maybe four years of development. And two of them are going to be potentially in the non-league. Or Sky Bet League 2 or whatever. So, yeah, it's definitely going to hamper them a little bit. So, I want to know if they're going to make it still. I reckon they'll be all right, to be fair. Uh, now he's a good, good player. You'll see he's determined, he's a leader, and he's brave. We all knew that, didn't we? Uh, he's definitely the best of the bunch. Again, just like the others, um, got the same agent, uh, same friends, and he dreams about playing for Leeds because obviously he's from Osset near Leeds, and he's a diehard Leeds fan for some weird reason. Just to show you, he had his uh, three years with Burnley. He was doing really well. He was on the brink of going in the first team. He'd have been in the Premier League now for a couple of years, but he followed his heart, followed his dream. He went in the army. Some might say it was a wrong decision. He's lost his friend. Um, but they all agreed, they all stuck together, um, and it is what it is. Now he's just got to do well for Stockport and make his old friend proud. I'll start here with Stockport. Now, they, they've only just, just got out of the non-league. So the lads didn't get the club out, unfortunately. 
But maybe they went for some big money and laid a good foundation and over the last decade Stockport have worked the way back to where they belong. They belong in the freaking championship in my opinion. But yeah, so the boys didn't do it, but how have the boys been doing? Well, we're going to start here with Brian Norris, who amazingly, and I love this, absolutely love it, has just signed for Rangers. And when I look at where he's been playing, it looks pretty cool. So the guy who could only, if he reaches full potential, get to about 140, I mean, he still had a bloody good career here, by the look of it, from what I'm seeing. And I mean, if you've got a good eye, you might see something pretty amazing that if you're Scottish, might make you jizz in your knickers. Quick look at his information. Um, wants to take up a coaching role, which is cool. Still would play for Stockport. Obviously wants to play for Rangers. You are doing. Uh, got his good old buddies there. He's now mates with Derek McInnes as well. Um, needs to find a new club. Media option. What, to get in the international team? Plays for bloody Rangers, man. On to his history, and this is well interesting. So, he spent about a year and a bit with Stockport. They've got just shot of half a million for him, which is great. Sold him to Juve. Now, he never played a game for Juventus. So I'm, I'm wondering if Juve saw a bit in him and saw him as a potential profit maker. Because they've brought him in and loaned him to Rangers. And he had a full season with Rangers. So, he's already been here before. That's cool. He would have loved that. Then he's got a spot at Moscow. And then he got sold on for profit to Lazio. Played a bit for them. They loaned him out to Sassuolo. Then he came back to Lazio. Had a full season with them. Made a biggish move for nearly 10 million to Spurs. After one year, benched. And now he's at Rangers. Because if we look at what he's won in his career, he won the freaking Euros in 2024. In 2024, with Scotland. Scotland won the Euros. That is amazing. So that's the only thing he's ever won. He's never won any cups or anyone, anything. With all these clubs. But who cares when you're Scottish and you've won the freaking European Football Championship. So well done, Brian Norris. Over to Jeff Wick and Jeff. He's 31, had a bit of a weird career, um, but unlike Brian, who's supposed to be worse than him, he hasn't played for his country, but no offence, maybe it's easier to get in the Scotland team, no offence, but Jeff's not been able to get in the England team, and at 31 probably won't, um, but he's a good player, decent physicals, good medals, his technicals may be lacking, his tackling never got any better, uh, maybe you know, being in the army has affected his progression, obviously, he's worth 16 million, he's just signed for a huge fee to Watford, from Saudi Arabia, so he's had a bit of a a random career. If we go over to his information, um, he loves that team, Saudi Arabia, and he can speak basic Arabic. He could have done with that when he was in the army, couldn't he? Speak a bit of that there, don't he? And Ajal, which isn't a real country, and that flag is fake, by the way. In case you're wondering, don't waste any time looking for the country of Ajal, because it don't exist. On to his playing history, and it's pretty interesting. He had one season with uh, Stockport and went for quite a lot of money, really, 675 grand. So they've got nearly over a million quid there, haven't they? For Stockport, that'd be amazing. Uh, and then he had a good career at Wigan. Like, years and years in the championship with Wigan. Uh, moves to Aston Villa. There's a great season there. Does enough with them um, to go to Everton. A, more of a squad player, it looks like, at Everton. Uh, and then decides maybe he wasn't playing too much. And in January, it looks like he might have left to go to Saudi Arabia. Then he has that one outstanding year in Saudi Arabia. And then Watford have gone... Why are you out there? You're 31. You're still a good player. And they've spent 20 million on him. And he hasn't won anything apart from his promotion with Villa. So that means, because he was with Wigan, then he went to Villa while they were in the Championship. And then he went to Everton. So he's got Villa out the Championship and Everton went, we'll have you. Now, on to the last one. And this is the minus nine player. Don't forget, this is Graham Statham, who looks brilliant. He's an elite midfielder. He can now play fully centre-half. And he couldn't even slightly play as a defender originally so that's another string added to his bow he's 31 he's played 22 times for england so he's not been a a regular international but i still think he's become a good player he could have become a great player on to graham's information page um he's a bit of a fan of uh, nuno which is interesting and um, still wants to play for leeds i don't know if that's ever going to happen he wants to be a manager which is cool as well uh, and he's an elite player now positives happen hoping to leave the club in the near future feels caring to so he's sick of Arsenal. Maybe he wants that one last big paycheck, one last big move. Now onto his history, and I've highlighted his last season at Everton because his last season was Jeff Wick's first season. So I like that, that they had that one full season together in the team and maybe even played at centre-half together. I mean, that would have been... That's, that's awesome. I love that. I don't know why. I find that brilliant. 
So they had that one year at Everton together. And then Graham's gone, look, mate, you've always dreamed about playing for Arsenal. Well, I'm off to Arsenal for 38 million squidlies. When it comes to winning things, um, he's done pretty well. Now, he has, let's have a look, been promoted with Reading, then got relegated with Reading, uh, but made his England debut, and that's when he went to Everton. Never did anything with Everton. With Arsenal, he's won an FA Cup. With England, he's won the International League. Uh, now, he lost the Euros in 2028, but he didn't lose it to Scotland. And they've been to the last two finals. So that was the one that Brian Norris, that's the one he won. And then he got next time when uh, Graham had finally made the team because Graham won in the team then. He's made the team and they get beat again. Well, there we go. We've got Stockport in the Football League. And the lads at 31 have all had pretty good careers. To be fair, very different, but very good. Um, I'm sure Joe is up there, proud as punch of his lads. Uh, and I think we should jump forward to the very end and see how it ends for our three heroes. And we'll start here like we have done in the past with Brian Norris, who was the minus seven potential player. And he retired... And he retired two years ago, so he retired in 2034 with Rangers. He spent four years with Rangers. He's now 37, uh, and he was Preston's under-18 coach for a year, and now he's just gone to Everton. Quick look at his history, and as we know, he finished his career with Rangers, and it looks like he played a lot for him. Although, unfortunately, I had the Scottish League on, so it would it would come up. He never managed to win anything. No league titles, no cups, which is uh, a, bit, a bit shocking. Now, just for you, if you want to pause it, and have a good read of his biography, feel free. But I think Brian can be pretty proud. And I think he looks like he's going to become a good coach one day. Now over to Jeff Wick. Jeff wanted to be an assistant manager. And Jeff's got a job, which I think is awesome. Because sometimes when you do this, um, they go into coaching or whatever. And they don't get jobs. So I'm buzzing with this. So Jeff um, looks like he retired in 2034. And he looks like he had a couple of clubs after Watford. What the hell? Here we are with his career history. And... I always thought it was a bit of a weird move. Bit of money, quite a bit of money for him, really. Didn't work out for him at Watford. He got moved on at a bit of a loss to Burnley. Stayed in the Premier League had one season with them. Uh, then was loaned out to Portland. Only played 10 games. So he had a little taste of uh, America. Um, and then went to Copenhagen. Hagen, On a free. Couldn't get in their team and just thought, this is it. I'm done here. I can't, get in, can't play in America. Can't play in Denmark. I'm calling it a day. He's probably got the most disappointing... Uh, medals cabinet because he haven't really got any again if you want to pause it and have a look how jeff did feel free one thing i i do believe though and i did it on um jekyll and hyde where i had a guy who was really potentially good but because he was angry he used to get sent off a bit much and so i think it affected his growth and i just wonder if if jeff had just chilled out maybe smoked a spliff just relaxed he might have had a better career but to be fair I'd take his career any day. He played for some fantastic teams. Last but not least, and I am buzzing with this, I just, what I do, I holiday and I have it saved every year. I like to come into things with fresh eyes because it's fun and it puts a smile on my face I like this. I don't even like Leeds, but seeing that great Graham Statham, the Leeds fan, is at Leeds. He never played for Leeds, but now he's at Leeds. I think it's amazing. Went for just over 5 million. Had two good years and his last year, Maybe struggle with injury, I don't know, but he didn't play as much. And he just thought, do you know what? I'm calling it a quits. And that's just recently. So he lasted longer than the other two. I think he was, was he a bit fitter? Jeff was fitter. He just maybe had a bit more ability, but he had a fantastic career. But then he lost the Caribbean Cup, lost an FA Cup. But then he's won that Euro Cup too, which is that third tier weird European thing that's just come out on the game. And again, feel free to pause it on Graham's uh, biography and have a good read of the little Yorkshireman, the leader of the group. I think Joe would be proud. I think he's buzzing. And I think all these three lads have obviously got careers still. There's another bloody 40 years in this. Well, there we go. That is the end of Band of Brothers. As always, I really hope you enjoyed it. It is just a bit of fun. Don't think too much about it. I just hope I've given you a little bit of escapism. And you've enjoyed it enough to smash the like button. And maybe even subscribe if you're brand new. Uh, I've got more of these coming here and there over the next few months. And I just really appreciate the support with this and with everything I do. You're a bunch of freaking legends. I hope you're happy. I hope you're all set for Christmas. I've been booed. I'll see you next time.